potato chips. It's one of America's favorite foods. I don't have statistics on that, but I'm just going to go ahead and make a wild assumption that that's true. And they're really easy to make at home, and especially if you're have, watching a sporting event with a bunch of other people, perhaps. It's nice to have some homemade potato chips to go along with the uh, festivities. And all it really requires is some preparation. So I've got on my protective USDA steak apron. It's important when you're deep frying things. You might want to protect yourself. It might be good to wear long sleeves, but you don't want long sleeves that are dangling or anything because then they'll just catch on fire and that's really no fun. Um, making potato chips really just requires slicing potatoes thinly, having some hot oil, making sure you've soaked your potatoes to get some of the starch off before, and then uh, it's actually a really good team sort of sport making potato chips because um, you can get people together and have someone slicing potatoes and then someone drying them off, someone dumping them into the oil, and then someone sprinkling salt on them. So you can get this whole system, get everyone involved. Don't have a bunch of drunk people, don't have a bunch of children or pets in the kitchen when you're deep frying because you'll you're much more likely to have an injury. Um, I'm going to slice my potatoes thin. I've got a mandolin, which is really helpful if you're making a bunch of these. You can do it by hand, of course. Um, it just takes a little more time. My mandolin's set to about a sixteenth of an inch. Um, I like my chips thin and crispy. If you like them a little thicker, um, by all means, do an eighth of an inch. And um, you use your handy hand guard. Of course you're using your hand guard. Why would you ever use your mandolin without your hand guard? Even though I do it all the time. Um, and slicing potatoes with mandolin is really easy because you just slide it down. This protects your fingers. You're not cutting yourself. You're not going to the hospital and missing some you know major important part of the game. And uh, yeah, makes quick work of slicing a lot of potatoes. Um, so I'm just going to slice this puppy up, and I've already sliced up a bunch more. Um, and once they're all sliced, I'm going to soak them in a bowl of water for at least half an hour. Water, shake them off and you want to lay them on a tray that's lined with a clean tea towel. Alright, so your soaked wet chips go on your tea towel. Um, water and oil, they don't mix. You throw something that's wet into hot oil, it's going to splatter everywhere. It's going to hurt you. It's not going to make any good chips. It's going to suck. So, dry your potatoes. Then we're going to go over to the hot oil and I'll show you how to fry them up. Okay, my oil's up to 370 degrees, and I'm gonna get ready to put the chips in. I've got my sliced potatoes that I've soaked for half an hour, and then dried off in a single layer on some paper toweling so they're not wet. Some of them are still a little bit damp, but you really don't wanna add a lot of water to hot oil because it's gonna splatter a lot. And you wanna do this in small batches. I'm gonna slowly sort of add in um, slices of chips. You can hear the sizzle. And they immediately float to the top. You want to be sure you have a plate um, with some paper toweling on it ready. Actually, I can add a few more. A lot of steam comes up because potatoes have lots of water in them, so you want to be sure not to get burned. I'm wearing a protective apron. I probably should be wearing long sleeves, but I'm not. You should, though. Um, and you want to stir them a little bit. You want to turn them over, the edges will start getting really brown really fast. Um, as you can see, it's a fairly quick process, and so you just want to be prepared um, to move quickly and keep on going. This is actually a really good job for more than one person, because you can have someone staging the potato slices, and someone frying, and someone salting them all together. So you can see they're already getting really brown and crisp. I'm going to start taking some of these out and putting them onto my paper towels. And you want some of the oil to drain off into the paper towels, that's why you're using them. And you want to be sure to salt the chips when they're hot because that's when the salt's going to stick and the salt crystals will melt just a little bit onto your chips and make them nice and savory and delicious. And you want to keep moving too. You want to make sure the oil stays hot, but you don't want it to get too hot. If it looks like 
it's starting to brown your chips too quickly, like that was actually getting sort of hot. Reduce the heat a little bit. It's going to retain some of the heat anyway. And um, you just want to try and maintain steady temperature as much as possible. Put the thermometer in in between batches if you're not sure. Um, it's really just kind of a game of playing with it. And they smell all potatoey and good too. And be sure I have a gas flame. It's pretty dangerous. You're using a pan full of hot oil, which is totally flammable. You have an open flame. Don't want to have kids or dogs or drunk people in the kitchen while you're doing this. You want to actually, you know, maintain a little bit of sanity when you're deep frying, if it's possible. And it's barely possible when the chips are that good. Really, they're just crunchy. And so very good. Perfect for dipping, but really, if they make it all the way over to the other room for dipping, I'll be surprised. That's one of the benefits of being the fry person, is that you get to eat all the fresh, hot, delicious chips. 